Mina, Ohio Gazimash, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Not with a New Year's message or, or a generic message, coming back at you with scripture, and it's going to be quite a few chapters from before the break began. I took my time off between Christmas and New Year's, and I've been reading the Bible since then, so I may do a little backtrack at some point and cover the chapters or a point from the chapters from the time when I was on vacation, but I'm actually going to just start off with the chapter that I read today, which is Second Chronicles chapter 35. If you have any intense interest in the chapters between 35 and the last message, I would strongly encourage you to read them for yourself and let the Lord speak to you because I'm going to keep on plowing forward. I'm going to keep doing at least one chapter in the Bible a day. That's just my personal prerogative. That's how I choose to go through the Bible. Don't get through it in a year, but by taking my time on a chapter each day, I feel like I get a little bit more out of it. And I also, I'm not feeling rushed, like I have to perform so much reading all at one time. So, a little insight into my personal Bible study habits. And today, it's going to be Second Chronicles 35. I'm going to start with verse 6. This is King Josiah telling the um, priests and the Levites, you know, we're going to keep this big old Passover. It's going to be us. It's going to be all the people. Let's get this organized. Let's get this straight. So starting at verse 6, So slaughter the Passover offerings, consecrate yourselves, and prepare them for your brethren, that they may do according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. So the game plan is, you guys, you, you, do, your, you do your job, you get yourself ready, and you prepare them for your brethren so they can do according to the word of the Lord. You do your job, you consecrate yourself, and that will enable your brethren to do what they need to do before the Lord. Verse 7, Then jo Josiah gave the lay people lambs and young goats from the flock, all for Passover offerings for all who were present, to the number of 30,000, as well as 3,000 cattle. These were the king's possessions. And his leaders gave willingly to the people, to the priests, and to the Levites. Hilkiah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, rulers of the house of God, gave to the priests for the Passover offerings 2,600 from the flock and 300 cattle. Also, Conaniah, his brothers Shemaiah, and Nethanel, and Hashabiah, and Jehiel, and Josabad, chief of the Levites, gave to the Levites for Passover offerings 5,000 from the flock and 500 cattle. So we have the king and leaders actually giving offerings to the people so that they can hold a proper Passover. To the very best of my knowledge, it was nowhere, well, of course, there wasn't a king back when Moses uh, gave out the Passover rules and laws, but there was nothing saying anywhere that the leaders were to provide for the people an offering. It was just at this point in time, Josiah wanted the Passover to be kept so bad, he was like, guys, I'll give you your offering." just come. And you, you could even make a counter-argument to that, where David, when he had to make a sacrifice to the Lord because the angel of the Lord was raining destruction on Jerusalem because he took a census um, that was sinful before the Lord, and he was like, I'll give you all the land, cattle, wood for the burnt offering, I'll give you everything, king, use it to sacrifice to God. And David said, I will not sacrifice to God what was not something that was given to me, something that's free, something that I did not pay for. Well, here we have a bunch of people literally using someone else's offerings. And so you could even argue, well, that probably wasn't a very good offering if you're using someone else's stuff to keep this ceremony where you should be offering your stuff. I mean, this is to the Lord, right? At the same time, can we really fault Josiah? He wanted the Passover kept. Um, it's even said down in, I've got, this is an important verse, Verse 18, there had been no Passover kept in Israel like that since the days of Samuel the prophet, and none of the kings of Israel had kept such a Passover as Josiah kept, with the priests and the Levites, all Judah and Israel who were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So, if I can take this verse very literally, that means even David never held a Passover like the one Josiah had. So, I feel like saying that it would saying, you know, they're offering a, an offering that wasn't directly from them. It wasn't from their heart. They possibly could not have meant it. Well, Josiah meant it with all of his heart, and he was commemorated as such in the Word of God. Josiah's heart was in it. So if there was some mistake on the people's hearts, 
I think it is greatly overshadowed by the fact that this king wanted to serve God with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I feel like that is a much more important point. Kind of like when David ate some of the holy food and he fed that food to his troops because they were hungry, because they were fleeing from the king. Even Jesus didn't have a particular problem with that, even though completely proper protocol wasn't carried out. And here, there wasn't really a protocol problem. It was just a matter of who's providing the offering. Where are the people getting the livestock to provide the offering? I can see where there would be an issue there, but I think that's very secondary to the fact that Josiah and the leaders, they wanted to help the people to follow God. And that's kind of the overarching point here. There are going to be some small details that we overlook and miss, and sometimes, guys, we will get it just straight up wrong. There will be a sinful motive somewhere, someone along the line, along the chain of command. Their heart isn't quite right before the Lord. But the overarching point is that we're helping each other to follow God, giving sometimes too much in order to help others follow God, and letting the body come together as one body. Christians coming together, helping each other serve God, not tearing each other down, not comparing ourselves with one another, but helping each other in the callings that God has given us to whatever extent we feel led of the Lord, comfortable with, is morally, ethically, from a business perspective, even right, politically correct. We're doing what we can to the best of our ability so we serve God and so that others can serve God as well. I'd like to return to that first verse that I read. Consecrate yourselves, prepare them for your brethren, that they may do according to the word of the Lord. Guys, we are fundamental in helping our brothers and sisters in Christ serve the Lord. We're important in that. We're not just an island unto ourselves. We help each other along the way. We bear one another's burdens. We pick up one another. We encourage one another. Iron sharpens iron. As unpleasant as that as the scraping and the rubbing can be, we build each other up. We correct mistakes when we see them. When we're offended with someone, we tell them, "Hey, I have this against you." When we think someone's offended with us, we go to them and say, "Hey, you know this happened. You okay with this? You know, are you offended with me?" And you're just honest about that stuff, and we keep each other accountable. We keep each other lifted up in prayer, and we help one another fulfill the calling of Christ on our lives. Guys, we can't do it alone. We have to help each other and be each other, be with each other in this process. And if mistakes happen along the way, I can promise you mistakes will happen along the way. I will make mistakes along the way. Even in my YouTube career, you've seen plenty of mistakes happen on this channel. Days when I didn't post, times when I posted late. For goodness sakes, I'm posting Tuesday stuff Wednesday because I was busy. I pulled another all-nighter. I did stuff. And honestly, I could have done YouTube earlier. I'm getting it out, but I'm getting it out late. But let's keep pushing forward, helping one another. When we see mistakes, point them out. Let's try to, and instead of tearing the other person down and telling them how wrong they are, let's pick them back up, even to the point of giving too much. If we're going to make a mistake, let's give too much. I think that was exactly the right thing to do in this scenario. If you're going to make a mistake, make a mistake in the safest, rightest, givingest, lovingest, mercifulest direction that we can even over judgment, because mercy triumphs over judgment. Google that one. It is in the Bible. I'm not just making that up, and I'm not just saying it because it sounds pretty. That's actually biblical, and I need to apply it to myself because I tend to be more the judgmental and not the merciful type. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.